Welcome back everybody. It's exciting times. It is ZBrush 2020. Been waiting for this for a little bit and pretty excited about it. Uh, haven't explored everything yet, but I thought I'd put together a quick video for you. Give you some quick tips here on one or two of the tools I've been working with. Haven't had much time with it. So I thought I would go over that with you and kind of show you what it's all about. So as you can see, uh, this is my UI from 2019. I modified it a little bit. I'll have an updated version for you on Gumroad and QBrush pretty soon. Uh, it might not be there for a few days or so. But, so this is just temporary for now. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have some new additions to the UI. We have uh, this nice uh, camera view up here that we can click and hold and snap around that's going to be quite helpful because I know it's kind of hard to do the whole shift thing every once in a while you get totally out of whack and not quite go the way you want it to and then these little arrows and everything that you can just click on click it again it goes to the other side same thing with top bottom hit the center dot there uh, there are some options to change that and I think Joseph Drust went over that in a recent live stream so I'm not really going to dive into that uh, then we got the little silhouette thing up here which is kind of cool you can check the silhouette of your character to, uh, great for concepting I think I'm going to find that quite handy and we're going to play with the little critter I got on the page here this is uh, some work I did over at uh, Power 62 uh, just a head bust of one of the creatures thinking about maybe doing a 3D print of him I think that would be pretty cool it's not the whole model it's just the the upper torso and head and took off took off the legs the front legs there that's why you got these weird little contraptions over here but today I wanted to talk to you about the history recall brush uh, that's the one I was kind of interested in out of most of them. Uh, I'll show you some caveats to it uh, and some things you might be able to do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and solo him real fast. And we're just going to take a look at the head. And as you can see, this is just a decimated model that I took from my uh, nicely topologized model. Uh, decimated down is just a, easier to work with. So, what I wanted to show you here is how this history recall works. So basically, as you all know, you have this little history brush, or a history uh, inventory up top here, um, right at zero, so there's nothing really to show. But you can do something, so say like, you just wanted to add details, you know, we're going to pull up damn standard, and I'm going to throw on Sculptress here, just... Uh, since it's a decimated model, I don't want to get too many artifacts from all the tessellation here. So we're just going to throw some lines in here, and I'm going to show you what's happening under the hood, basically. So, so basically we've got all this history built up here. We've got five, five layers of history, or levels, or whatever. So basically, we can go all the way back to the beginning. Now we're back to the start here. And if you do control and click it, it's kind of hard to see on my UI here, but the color did change slightly. It lightened up just a little bit. And now we go all the way back to the our most recent edit here. And we can go ahead. I'm going to turn off Sculptress now. And we're going to go to the history recall. So if you just do BH and history recall. And we'll scale it up just a little bit, and then we're going to just erase everything we did. Now, cool thing is, let me go back one. We can go ahead, we can dial that intensity down. So say like, I like it, but it's just too intense. So it's almost like having a morph brush using a morph target. And we could just fade away some of that uh, detail we threw in there. Now, cool thing here is it's not dependent on topology. Or, yeah, it's not dependent on the wireframe. If we pull up the wireframe, you can still see that all our uh, extra topology from the sculptress is still there. So, 
neat thing about that is we can basically retopologize another model. So let me show you that. Let me go all the way back to the beginning. And I'm just going to delete history. And don't get scared, that bar will come back. There it goes. Probably just a little bug there that they're going to have to fix. But it does come back. Now, go ahead and hit Control. Click on it again. And what I did was I took that model, retopologized it with Z remesher. So now we can get this low poly cage that's awesome for, you know, animation. So now all I have to do is divide, divide, and we'll probably get him up to about 2 million. And now watch what happens. So we're going to crank the intensity back up there about 15. And look at all that detail coming on there. So I'm going to show you a little caveat to this, uh, brush here in just a second you may not notice it just yet but just wait there's a, a problem that it's happening here you're thinking hey this is just totally cool I don't have to use the project all from here uh, no all right so everything looks hunky-dory in this view right you take a look around you got some projection issues. Okay, and the reason that's happening is basically, let me control Z. So the mouth is one of the hardest parts. You can see how there's an overhang right there. And see how it's trying to project back. So there's where you're gonna run into issues. So now that you know that, what you could do is create a morph target so I'm going to do store morph target. If you're not sure where that is, if you go under under your tool panel and you come down to morph target and store, store MT, which I have on my UI here. Now we can use the history recall in conjunction with the morph target. It's going to save us from any of those issues. So I could do this. All right, let me turn it. Okay, I got problems here. Let me drag it down a little bit. I'm gonna to go to my morph brush. I'm gonna fix all that, fix all those uh, crazy geometry there as it pushes in, because that's just gonna make a mess of things. Now we go back to the history recall now that I got the camera at a different angle now. And you can do the smooth, but you might want to get like the smooth stronger. As you can see, you got this folding geometry right here. So it's almost better just to use the morph, morph it out, back into shape, use your history. I'd almost like to have a dual action brush where I can hit shift and it goes to morph instead. There's something for you, Pixelogic. I hope you hear me. And then go back to history, fix that little spot. And see, you got this crazy overhang here, Control Z. And it's more for you. Fix all that, oh my. Yeah, lots of problems, lots of problems. What else would also help you out after I fix this? is turn on your back face masking. That'll help isolate some of those uh, overhangs so you're not shooting out there. So we'll go back to history. And as long as you stay away from the edges, it's gonna help you out quite a bit. Morph it. Uh, but you also gotta turn off back face masking when you do the morph. So as you can see, this is not the magic solution that we saw on the videos. Uh, we go back to, I'll go to this one here that I did earlier that I took my time trying to do. And I just did one side. 
let me go up to my undo history. There we go. And all I did was just like a smart uh, resim on deformation to get the detail back to the other side because I know it's a symmetrical model. But if you go and move him up here, Oop. so if I go up, I was able to get a halfway decent projection. So, you know, it it just depends on what what you want to do. I mean, if you want to go the route of projectile, go for it. It, or if you want to use conjunction of history recall at the same time, that might come in handy because even the project all has issue, issues and then you can use the history recall to fix the errors. So there is no perfect solution to take your low poly or high poly model and project it down to a low poly. It's There's not quite a perfect solution yet, but we're getting a lot closer with this brush. And I just wanted to share that with you today. And I hope you learned something here. I, when I get more time, I'm going to explore more of uh, 2020 here. And I will definitely uh, throw out some more quick tip videos for you. I hope this helps you out. Uh, visit me on all my social media. Uh, definitely visit uh, Power62, what I've been working on. Or, we're uh, kickstarting real soon, so definitely come check it out. This will be one of the characters that's on one of the videos coming out pretty soon for it. And we will catch you in the next video. You guys have a great day and enjoy ZBrush 2020.